Greetings, everyone. Does your relationship with people often leave you feeling tired or drained? Are you feeling angry or hurt a lot when you talk to persons? If the answer is yes to these questions, then I say this video is for you. And so I'm going to start out by asking you, why are you always attracting emotionally intense people that overwhelm you? And the answer lies in this video. See, that attraction is two-way. It's like a two-way mirror. There's something about you that makes them hand off their emotions on you. One, or A, uh, or B, there is something about you that makes the intensely emotional person want to be around you and hand off their emotions on you. C, there's something about them that draws you to them and allow you to tolerate their behavior. Sometimes we embrace the theory that we are empath to justify allowing people to dump their emotions on us. And when they are free from it, they are no longer in need of you or your services. And then at that time, you become resentful. You get sad. You're like, oh my goodness, people are always using me. You don't realize that you offer yourself almost like a living sacrifice to these ones. The reason... I used to absorb every and um, every other person's emotion besides the fact that I'm overly sensitive. It's because I had low emotional intelligence. That is the ability to recognize and manage my own intelligence, my own emotional intelligence and that of others. So um, when I would listen to people's stories, when they were deeply emotional, I would leave that conversation and carry on that conversation days after. You have to have intelligence, emotional intelligence, you know, which is the ability to recognize and manage your own emotional intelligence and that of others. So while it's okay to share by listening with other persons, you have to put yourself in a situation where you're not taking that person's burden onto yourself and it then becomes yours because in essence they are releasing themselves from it especially if you're a good listener and then when they go on or move on you now carry that burden having a high in emotional intelligence allow you to differ differentiate your own emotion and that of others you have to be so skilled in knowing the difference so you don't take on other person's emotion and make them your own you need self-awareness it is very critical how do you feel after someone release their emotions when they share with you are you angry are you sad do you feel used when those persons no longer need you so here's an example a friend reaches out to you to share his or her relationship problems. The person is saying, I feel trapped. I'm unable to leave my partner. You know, despite the fact that they're being abusive, that they cheat, that they're lazy. You are listening to the story. And when the person is telling you, you're becoming more angry. And after that conversation is over, your anger lasts for days. After the person is done telling you these horrible things, that person is doing to them they cry to you they come across as desperate you come off that phone and you're angry or if the person is in front of you you walk away from that situation feeling helpless you know because the details of the story rest with you for days and now if you're in a healthy relationship you start to worry that your partner might one day cheat on you or leave you or abuse you or any of the thing that was discussed in that situation later on you see that same person posting vacation pics or telling of beautiful gifts that their partner gave them you can't believe it was the same person that they told you was so wicked so you see that same person talking to their supposedly abusive partner or talking to other persons about them 
laughing up a storm with somebody after they told you that they were so hurt. They were so angry when they spoke to you moments before or days before. And you took that on and carried that for days only to find out that the same person that, you know, allowed you or invited you because they didn't allow you. They invited you with their stories and you decided to take it on like you, it was a purchase. Before you spoke to that person, you were laughing, you were feeling ha happy. And after they left you, you carried their emotions for days, weeks, months, years. You lost your peace of mind. You became anxious because of someone else's problem. They needed to dump it and you decided to carry it. It is a very unconscious process that, that will help you deal with your own emotion. Sometimes you're having the same problems these folks are having. And so when they come to you, it's a way of allowing you to escape through them. We often draw people with unhealed parts to ourselves because those parts of ourselves are also unhealed. And so you have to be very careful that you don't allow other person's problems to determine how you feel. Being a people pleaser is also one of the reasons why you allow these kinds of emotional abuse. Because they really are. Because sometimes there are people who have no problem releasing their problems on you. People often share their stories to hear what you have to say too sometimes. Sometimes they're not prepared to change. They just want to search for pity or permission to continue in their emotionally unintelligent ways. Don't suffer with people to validate them. If they don't want to change, then let them revel in their own self-pity without destroying your own peace. We often see people, you know, as projects to fix the heal, uh, uh, to fix, heal and restore. And this is not your portion in life. To fix anybody, you can offer a listening ear, you can give an advice here and there, but it's not your problem or your business to fix anyone. When you start feeling like someone else's problem is yours, that person has successfully unburdened themselves onto you and they cast what seems like a spell on you and is now free of that burden, which, which, no, which is no different from witchcraft. You have to remove that X. To recharge your energy if you don't go in there with emotional intelligence because when they dump the problem on you it is like witchcraft being an emotional sponge will also draw people to you and there are people who are takers they often don't ask you how you're doing they expect you to always be there ready to help them dump their emotion on you and if you are there nine times and on the 10th time you are going through something and they have a problem, um, they're not going to ask you how you're feeling. They just want you to help them deal with their own problems. And if you're not there, the ninth, the 10th time, they will drop you like hot cake. So it is very important for you to increase your emotional intelligence. Stop and think about what you are feeling. Is it because you can relate or did the other person, um, was the other person successful at passing on their negativity to you? Because that is what it is. It's all about them passing on their negativity onto you. It is not bad to empathize with others, but it must not lead with you feeling depressed or lead to you feeling depressed. You have to learn to manage your emotions. You have to practice mindfulness, meditation, for example. Observe anger in a neutral way. Put up your field of protection so you are not drawn into people's problems emotionally. Place boundaries between the person complaining or sharing. Don't share more of your time with them than persons would share with you. Limit your time with people who don't want to save themselves. You may feel you can turn the negative into positive. But that desire to change people will only change you and often in a negative way. Don't focus on other person's problems to avoid looking at yours. You can't save everybody. You have to focus on saving yourself. 
you know, I'm going through this very quickly because I don't want to forget as the thought is here flowing. I'm saying to you that when you're there for other persons, it is very good. But you are not going to be of any help to anyone if you're going to go in there too emotional. Because the things you're going to say to them or any advice that you might give to them might only work to destroy them. The important thing is to stay neutral, listen to what they're saying. And if you find this person is consuming all your time, remember that person would be a selfish person. If every time they talk to you, it's always about their problem and they never ask you how you're doing, understand that person is just an individual who, you know, like I said, is like a magician who will then release their venom on you leaving you with that and they don't care how you're going to deal with it as long as they empty themselves of it okay uh, i had an experience in a supermarket once a lady told me something and i felt so depressed and when i shared it with someone else she started feeling depressed too because we were not looking at it in an emotionally intelligent way and then I saw someone else release that same information to another person. So be careful what people are releasing on you, what their intention is. Are they actually going through something? And are they the kind of person who, if you had a problem, you could go to? Because if it's not a duality, if it's not a thing where you can share your experience with these persons, then I see no reason why you should carry their burden. Stay blessed, everyone.